name is Melissa Chavez, and we're here at Open Source Bridge 2011. And today I am speaking with... Uh, Melissa Hollingsworth. I'm a speaker here at the conference. Yes. And uh, what are you speaking about at the conference? Well, in theory, I'm speaking about normalization and denormalization of data models. I think the real appeal is the puppets. So this is kind of why I wanted to speak with you, was the puppets. So can you talk a little bit about how that helps your presentations? I see no reason why technical presentations and papers should have to be boring. How many times have you gone to a presentation and somebody's been up there droning on about the slides and you're trying to stay awake? And Really, there's no reason the same information cannot be presented in a more entertaining fashion. And at, you'll find at this conference it often is. A lot of these are, people are very good speakers. But I just went completely over the top with it at one point and decided to do a puppet show. And this went on over so well that ever since then I've become known more for the zaniness of my presentation forms than anything else. I've done machinima musicals, for example. Um, at one point I'm going to do a shadow play. All with technical content, too. Um, uh, can, I would like to talk a little bit about the content. Uh, okay. What got you into the open source uh, community work that you do? Well, I've been in and out of open source uh, for a very long time. Uh, I think what I like most about open source is just that it is accessible to everyone. You can get open office. You don't have to pay a bunch to get an office suite. Anybody can get an old computer and run Ubuntu and be fine, instead of having to buy a new computer and then buy an operating system. And this is great, um, well, it's great for everyone, really. Even if you're rolling in piles of cash, why pay more than you have to? And somebody's got to make this stuff, and it benefits everyone. There are times when the benefit gets a little more real-worldy, too. Those of you who have been in online a long time, may remember when Cantor and Siegel, the green card spammers, knocked Australia off the net. That's no longer possible. Much more recently, the government of Egypt tried to pull Egypt off the net, and they couldn't. There were too many other people helping out, setting up bulletin boards, uh, gathering messages via IRC to be put from other countries into Twitter. Uh, telecomics gets a lot of credit there. Those people worked hard. That's something you can really do a lot of good by donating to the open source community. It's not all about you know making free games, or even about the fun stuff like watering your garden with an Arduino. That is very fun, but you can do more meaningful things too. Um, you mentioned a bit uh, about all the things that people can do. Uh, what do you think are better ways to get them involved? Get them while they're young, while they think it's still normal. Your previous interviewees were talking a bit about uh, kids, and I would like to mention the existence of Scratch, a language at MIT. It's scratch.mit.edu for anyone out there who wants to check it out. There are also a number of Scratch derivatives, uh, BYOB, Slash, Panther, probably a million others I've forgotten. They let you do different things just by dragging and dropping. And then if your kid is a normal kid, he'll get curious about how these different blocks are made. He'll start opening up the raw tuples. He'll start downloading a real development environment and a hex header to take them apart. He'll learn squeak. He'll learn small talk. He'll start hacking the underlying engine. And before you know it, you've got an eight-year-old who can break into any Windows machine on the planet with his magic flash drive where he keeps a dot .changes file. Uh, yeah, so anyway. <laughs> and you speak of this from experience, I A little assume. bit, yes. <laughs> um, so that <laughs> brings me to my next question about what are you passionate about? And you had mentioned your son before, so. Mm, yes, so well, he, he's definitely coming along as a hacker. <laughs> he's going to a summer camp, and uh, the staff ask him when they have computer questions. Right now, he's still trying to figure out how he can be a zillionaire, but I think uh, he'll probably get more into open source as time goes by. He likes to get free stuff. Why not help make free stuff? He likes to save the world. Why not save the world with something he's really good at? So I think teaching the children, just as the, the previous people suggested, is an excellent way to get more people involved in open source. 
I also think the entertainment helps because I try to make my zany presentations entertaining even if you don't understand a word of the technobabble. That can come later. If you're, if you're there to watch a, a lion and a unicorn get into a fight, that's fine.